What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. Today, we are taking a ride and review on this 2023 Yamaha MT-03, baby. You might be saying, yeah, that is a good looking bike. It looks brand spanking new. And that's because it is. And it's because it's a giveaway bike. However, there's a bit of a twist. So this bike, if you guys have logged onto the store and seen some stuff, we're giving this thing away. But in order to collect the right amount of data, we actually didn't talk about this on YouTube at all. So this is the last day you have to get entered to win this thing because we wanted to see what would happen if we did a giveaway bike and never told anybody on YouTube anything about it. So if you want the chance to win it, uh, you can go to yamanube.co right now. It's the last day, actually. I'm sure we're running some sort of very cool multiplier for your entries and make sure you get locked in because uh, it's one of those short-term giveaway bikes. So if you're looking for a perfect beginner bike, you want an MT-03, uh, I've got one here for you. So that's pretty cool. So let's run over the specs of what makes this an awesome first motorcycle and a great beginner bike. So before we swing a leg over this machine, what are we working with? Well, we've got Yamaha's 321cc parallel twin motor from the Yamaha R3. This shares basically the same architecture as that bike. And fun fact, the Yamaha R3 was my first motorcycle back in 2015. It's a great little engine, makes about 42 horsepower, 22 foot-pounds of torque. It is very beginner friendly, very beginner appropriate. One of the best things about this motorcycle is it's a low seat height, about 30 inches. Uh, Yamaha has basically made this bike to be a super, super competitively priced, very approachable little motorcycle for the entry level rider. So you'll see as I swing a leg over this machine, I'm about 5 foot 11 with a 32 inch inseam. I mean, guys, I have a firm grasp with both of my feet down here bend in my legs. I think for shorter riders, this bike makes a ton of sense. It also costs $4,799, which is an absolute steal. But the big question is, in a world where CF Moto 450s and Ninja 400s and Aprilia RS 457s are becoming more and more popular, does the humble little NT03 with its 321cc engine, does it still make sense and should you get one of these bikes? Well, let's start her up and go take her for a spin, shall we? Firing it up here, you see it's got this nice LCD display. It's not inverted like the new MT07, so it does make it a little bit harder to read. Fire it up, get a sound clip. It's a very humble little engine. <laughs> 321 cc 180 degree crank parallel twin very very easy going little bike and that's the whole thing about the mt03 the whole thing about it is just very easy going all the control inputs here are very friendly very easy to get along with the brake is very wooden uh, <laughs> that is my biggest complaint about this platform of motorcycles is the front brake is just incredibly wooden feeling and just does not really give you the proper response that you would expect. However, that's okay because it's meant for beginner riders, you know? You have to put yourself into the mindset of who's gonna own this motorcycle, right? And it's gonna be someone who's either buying a super low budget commuter little bike to bop around with, maybe you want a little uh, grocery getter type of bike, just go pop over to the store, grab something real quick, because it is so cheap, man. This could kind of be like a Grom type of bike. Um, but it's full size, which is cool. Or it's going to be someone's very first motorcycle. And a lot of the inputs here are very much like my first bike, right? Like the clutch is super light and easy to use. The transmission is very notchy and easy to get along with. You know exactly what gear you're in. You're never questioning what gear you're in. The throttle tube is something I really want to talk about specifically because it is so gentle and long and <laughs> easy to use. Um, it's got this, and this is all stuff you can dial out because this is cable throttle, but it's got this enormous amount of dead space. Look at all that. I'm not even getting on the gas there, and it's just this huge amount of dead space. And to get it wide open, you got to really squeeze all the way out. And, you know, a 321cc, it's the type of power that you know, it's not going to scare anybody. Uh, I mean, this bike, it's a rever. So not only that, you really have to get it up in the power band to really feel what it's going to do. But even when you get up there, it's definitely not going to scare you. So we'll go ahead and drop it into third gear here. Got no traffic ahead of us. See here, wide open all the way to 12 and a half. Not bad. 
That is a great rev ceiling for a little bike like this. And it's one of my favorite parts about this 321cc from Yamaha is it revs really nicely. It's got a really nice rev ceiling to it. Really nice, easy to read speedometer, tachometer over here. Uh, RPMs, excuse me, that is the tachometer, the gear position indicator, and the fuel gauge right there. That is everything you need to know with what's going on in your motorcycle. How fast you're going, where are the revs, what gear, and how much fuel you got left. It's perfect, awesome. So one thing about this bike, I did mention it's great for shorter riders. I really do believe that. Uh, this motorcycle works very, very well if you are, shit man, even like five foot one, five foot two, if you're very, very vertically challenged, let's say, very approachable motorcycle. I think for female riders especially, which as we all know, female riders tend to be a bit smaller and shorter than us males. And uh, this is a great motorcycle for female riders because it's super unintimidating very uh, small in terms of its dimensions. It only weighs about 370 pounds. So I know a lot of female riders gravitate towards things like the Honda Rebel 500. It's a very popular motorcycle given its size, given its low seat height. But I would say if you are a female that's looking for a more sport oriented motorcycle, uh, the MT-03 here is pretty sweet. Its uh, dimensions are very compact, but it does get to a point that I think that uh, me, again, I'm about 5'11", almost six feet, probably with my boots about six feet tall, and it's a, it's a teensy bit cramped. It does feel a little small. It's about as small as I would want a motorcycle to feel. Um, like I said, it almost has that Grom-esque feeling where you're like, man, this is a tiny little thing. But that can be really good because you can feel very in control of this motorcycle. It doesn't feel like it's going to get away from you at any time. Um, I gotta say, this blue paint job is really cool, and I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but this right here is not black. It's like a, it's like a pearlescent blue, and it's a really nice touch. When I bought this thing, I thought it was gonna be a, a blue, or excuse me, a black matte paint job here, but it's actually a nice pearlescent blue, which is uh, really cool. And this uh, classic Yamaha blue always looks good. Uh, you gotta love Yamaha blue. The look out of the dash here is very simple. Yamaha's done a really nice thing here. Updated you for these uh, blade uh, indicators right here. They used to be those god awful big bulby fluorescent things. My first R3 back in 2015 had those. They were terrible. The look out of the dash here is really nice. Uh, they've done a good job with the cable management here. Nice and tidy. And I think it's a nice place to sit. I think it's a place that you would actually want to spend some time on and to enjoy. Taking off from first gear here. The gearing's nice and snappy on the MT-03 as well. Uh, it basically runs the exact same running gear as the R3. I don't think they've made any changes to uh, the final drive, the sprocket, the front sprocket, or the internal gears. I, this feels identical to an R3 from what I remember. Or if it is different, it is marginally different. No, not, not a real big difference here. And that's what's interesting about this bike is, you know, some naked variants of sport bikes, uh, they tend to, you know, really try to make them really different. Yamaha, whether it's for cost cutting purposes or for, you know, uh, some sort of like intentional design choice, now, this is functionally identical to an R3. It just has a handlebar and a much cheaper price. Again, $47.99 gets it done for this bike. Of course, you gotta pay tax, title, license, dealer fees, all that sort of stuff. But this is a motorcycle that you can probably get like fully out the door, not assuming any finances or anything like that, probably under $6,000, um, which is pretty great. Uh, that's really not too bad. You're getting a, a full-size good motorcycle for that kind of money. Uh, it's really good, you know? Banging it through here, this little roundabout. It's super easy to flick over and to uh, enjoy. Like I said, very low weight, so got a lot of leverage through the handlebars here. Um, you can bank this thing over side to side very easily. It's a, it's a nice, agile, sporty little bike. We are definitely going to get it up in the twisties and, and see how she do, because we have to, because that's how we do it here on Yammy Noob. Uh, but overall, I think it's a, a very successful package when you're just kind of bopping down the road. I mean, Yamaha's been doing this thing for a long time. Uh, I would be very surprised if we were to jump on a beginner Yamaha bike and it wasn't just, you know, exactly what you would expect it to be. I do think that, you know, with stuff like the CF Moto 450, the Aprilia RS 457, um, I, I do think that Yamaha 
is kind of overdue for a bit of an update to this platform. Uh, this debuted in 2015 with the R3. Uh, I believe that was the first year they made it. You know, in a couple of months, that's going to be nine years ago. Uh, times have changed. Times have moved on. Uh, although this is still a great place to start your motorcycling journey, it's not what I would consider cutting edge. Uh, definitely not. It looks really cool. Uh, and if that's really important to you, uh, this is a great looking little motorcycle. And if you want something that has that edgy kind of look to it, you really like the Yamaha bikes. I mean, shit, that was a big reason why I purchased my R3. It looked like a big bike. It has that R bike presence to it. Um, I really liked it. Uh, you know, this bike still fits the bill. I think the only other one that looks more edgy is the uh, the CF Moto bikes, but this is the, the edgiest looking beginner bike. I'll have to admit that. <laughs> so if you want something that looks a little more edgy and out of this world, then the MT-03 is going to do it. But I really think it's high time the Yamaha either, you know, maybe updated this platform a little bit, maybe gave it a little bit bigger engine because we're now used to having beginner bikes you know, make that 28 foot-pounds of torque, 50 horsepower mark. You know, about a 10% about a improvement in power on the MT-03 would make it more competitive. I think it definitely would need a few more updates and features as well. I don't see why Yamaha doesn't just tack on that 3.5 inch TFT they're using for the MT-03. Just update the software and make the display more simple for the MT-03 and it would definitely work very well. Um, Although to be to be honest, this display is bigger than that 3.5, I believe. It's it's narrower, but it is bigger. That's something I would love to see on this package. Uh, updated TFT, a little bit more power. I think also the braking system is <laughs> like absolutely high time for Yamaha to fix that. Uh, there's no need for it to be like this. The Ninja 400 uses similar running hardware. It's a Nissan caliper, simple little master cylinder. Um, there is just something about this Yamaha setup. I believe it's this master cylinder. Goodness gracious, it just feels so cheap and you get no feel from the lever. And again, for beginner riders, it's not a big deal. I don't want you guys to think that this is a bike that you're like, oh, I'm gonna jump on it and I'm not gonna get any braking feel and it's gonna be dangerous. No, you're gonna be just fine. You have braking power, you have stopping power on this machine. But the difference is if you're an experienced rider, uh, you, you can't really modulate these brakes very well. That's the problem. You know, when you get on the brakes, you get really weird wooden feedback from them. Try to cut it up through traffic here a little bit. Look at that, even on MT-03, folks. Just scoot your way through all kinds of traffic. That's real nice. You can easily speed on this motorcycle. I think a lot of people will ask, oh, is it enough? Is it is it fast enough? Is it good enough? It totally, man. Like, I think if you're the type of beginner rider that's very concerned about power, you're probably not looking at an MT-03, honestly, right? Like, you're probably looking at uh, a 450 SS or an MT-07 or a Ninja 650, something in that kind of like, oh, I'm going to grow into it category. And I don't think that's the type of bike that you would look at. But I think for this bike, it makes a lot of sense. And again, for, for shorter people, for people who want a great bargain for, for their money, uh, this is a cool bike. You know, it makes a lot of sense. It works really well with this category. And, you know, it's a nice place to be. I think that it's the type of motorcycle that, you know, you could uh, you could say it's it's a little outdated. It doesn't work well. Like there's better options, but this price is very competitive. Forty-seven ninety-nine gets done for this thing. So with all that being said, I'm gonna get this motorcycle out on some twisties. I'm gonna get it on the highway, and we're gonna keep enjoying this bike. We're now on a twisty ribbon of asphalt, testing the prowess of the MT-03, and I gotta say the. Uh, actual handling of the bike the way it feels side to side is really nice i can't remember if they're still specking those god-awful bias ply tires on this bike i don't think they are i don't think there's any way that they're still doing that uh they finally have actual tires on this thing and one of the coolest things about the mt-03 is that you can really just rev this thing super hard and you're not really going all that fast which is kind of nice you know so if you really want that motorsports experience out of your motorcycle you want to hear super high revs without much of a uh, you know consequence so to speak bank it into the right there this is a great platform to do it now, I really gotta say like the frame on this bike does feel very good 
I know that these on track, after you start to really push them, they can get a little, a little out of shape. Um, the Ninja 400 definitely has a more rigid construction, a little bit better uh, feeling on track. But for the average sport rider on street, this is a really good platform that works really, really well. And I think, again, the only thing that really holds this bike down is the braking feel. That's a big detractor for me. And especially when I'm charging twisties, I want really accurate braking information coming to me from my motorcycle. Um, I want to make sure that the bike is uh, in such a way that it allows you to really feel that threshold of braking. Now again, this bike isn't so fast that I need the brakes so much, but I still like to load up the front end and trail in the brakes in the corners. You know, we're going downhill here a little bit. We may have to actually, no, we don't need to hit the brakes at all. But it's one of those things where because the bike is a little bit slower, you can get away with not using the brakes as much. But you'd want a little bit more feel out of it. Like, and up here, you know, up this hill, fourth gear, uh, I wish I had a little bit more torque. Again, like I said earlier, I think this bike is long overdue for a nice little upgrade. Maybe a 10% improvement on power, 10% improvement on torque, give it a little bit better braking feel. And then this is a really solid little contender in the beginner bike category. Back in 2015, I guess this bike didn't come out in 2015, whenever the MTO3 was revealed, I think it might have been like 18, 19. You know, it wasn't as big of a deal. But I, I think, guys, at this point, the Yamaha is the weakest of the beginner bike bunch if you don't include stuff like Honda's CB300R. But really, Honda positions their, their 500 as their beginner bike. But that bike sucks. The <laughs> CBR500 just sucks. It's so slow. It's so heavy. It's so expensive. It's really no fun to use, honestly. The MT-03 is a much better bike, no doubt about it. Wide open, baby. You can spend your time with this bike very close to Redline. A lot of your time is going to be spent wide open on this motorcycle. Even in street riding applications, you're pretty much wide open on it most of the time. And it's, you know, if you're a more experienced rider, it's the type of bike that you're going to really enjoy. Because you can really just wring the neck off of it. Now, one thing I did want to point out that I just felt back there is there is no slipper clutch on this motorcycle. What does that mean? It means that when you grab downshifts, you need to release the clutch a teensy bit more slowly. Otherwise, you're going to get rear wheel chatter because the... Uh, engine and the transmission's all trying to catch up to the same speed. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If you do own an MT-03, you're going to want to make sure that, uh, you know, when you're banging down shifts, you're uh, doing so carefully because you can get some rear wheel chatter. It's no big deal, uh, but if you're really pushing it, you are going to feel it. But I don't think that a beginner rider is going to be riding very even close to this on the street. So what I'd like to do actually after I take this corner because it's just really so delicious. Look at that, it's beautiful. It holds a line really well. And it's really rewarding to use, honestly. It's still a motorcycle, still a lot of fun. I'm gonna dial it back here a little bit. I'm actually really curious. So I usually attack this corner and go really crazy to show you guys the twisties. But what I wanna do right now is take it a little bit easier in the way that a beginner rider might take this, right? Maybe third gear, you're just kind of feeling it out. You're a little nervous. You got this left hand bend coming up. Let's keep it lower gear because maybe you were worried about downshifting a little bit. And this bike is super predictable. That's what's cool about it. Uh, because of that long throttle too, because the brakes are a little bit squishier, um, it doesn't feel scary at all to use. Uh, you know, we're carving through here, this right-hander going uphill, decreasing radius a little bit on camber, so it feels good. Um, it's a really nice experience. It's a really easy to get along with motorcycle. I find myself really enjoying riding this thing, honestly. It's really nice to be able to use a lot of the bike and to just feel that effervescent, peppy little motor, because it does rev to 12 and a half. It's a lot of fun to rev out, and it makes power pretty much all the way to the top. Uh, it doesn't really peter off, so to speak. But it's the type of bike that you could really, really enjoy. Well, we're just in the middle of the street here. Okay, that's fine. It's okay, because I'm on a motorcycle. It's all good. Yeah. 
I think you could practice a lot of the fundamentals on here, really get along very well with this motorcycle. Um, so normally what I do after this section is I like to take you guys on the highway, show you guys the prowess of that motorcycle that we're riding uh, as a highway machine because it is very important, especially in the American market because you guys want to see, hey, can this bike really keep up in traffic and do what it needs to do, especially as a small bore motorcycle, a 321cc. And to be honest, I think the answer to that is a resounding yes. I think it's very unlikely that you're gonna find yourself on this motorcycle and be like, oh my God, I can't even keep up in traffic. You're gonna be just fine. It can definitely do all of that and more. So what I wanted to do instead was I actually wanted to find a uh, little parking lot situation here and show you guys the slow speed prowess of the MT-03 because I do think it's one of its big strengths. Uh, people often malign this motorcycle for you know, maybe not being as as nice to ride. I'm gonna I'm gonna freaking scramble it over there, dude. Why not? Do this gravel here? Sure, why not? Uh, people often malign this motorcycle for not being very, you know, fast and it's a little outdated. But I think the MT-03 has an ace up its sleeve, and I really think it's the fact that it is super low seat height and nice steering sweep. Check this out. Let me show you guys this right here before I bank a little U-turn. Look how far you can go lock to lock, right? And look how easy it is to put a foot down. This is a bike that I think is very close to not being able to be dropped. Uh, it would be very difficult to drop this motorcycle, I think. I think you'd have to try really hard, actually. So here we can take off. Bank really tight little U-turns with this thing. Counterbalance a little bit, no problem. It's super easy to get along with. <laughs> and that's a great thing. Like, this is where beginner riders typically fall apart, is the slow speed stuff, the clutch balancing, all that sort of thing. But this bike, very easy to bank those little U-turns. You can put a foot down if you're feeling a little weird about it, you know? Go ahead and just look where you want to go. And the bike just works. It's super easy to ride. And that's really important for these kind of bikes, you know? I think it's super important to get a bike that is going to be easier to ride, easier to get along with. You want a bike that you can do that sort of thing with, you know? Because, yes, you're going to be spending some time on the highway. Yes, you're going to be spending time on the twisties. But owning a bike like this is really about the slow speed maneuvers, practicing those skills. Because, again, this is where a lot of beginner riders get out of sorts and drops. But look, I come to a stop. My foot's right there. Even if I were to start, oh no, tipping it over, it's lightweight, I can put my foot back up really easily, pick the spike up, no problem at all. Very, very easy to live with and get along with. All right, let's get this motorcycle back on the highway and see how she does. But before we do, why don't we get a quick zero to 60 acceleration test, shall we? We got a guy coming up behind us, but he's turning left, so we're clear to go. I got a little itch in my nose. Okay. gonna take you three gears to get to 60 so this motorcycle is geared pretty dang short honestly um, and that is one thing I'm gonna mention on the highway is that you know you're gonna be cooking sixth gear screaming at about 8,000 rpm when you're going about 70 so let's jump over to the highway let's see how she feels entering the highway on ramp with the MT-03 stuck behind a Florida license plated Mazda here such is life on American interstate systems. The MT-03 is totally capable of doing this sort of thing. Now, is it the most well-equipped motorcycle to do with? Well, not exactly. I'm wide open in fifth now, grabbing up into sixth. I'm doing about 77 indicated, so realistically like 70 miles an hour. Um, I can probably test the top speed of this bike in traffic because it's not really that fast. So I'm wide open at 6, ringing it out here. Looks like I can hit just about 90, 92. Might be all she's got. 94. The aerodynamics of this bike 
obviously compromise it a little bit, right? I remember on my R3, I think my top speed I could reach was about 110, 112, something like that. But when you're working with this little horsepower, about 44, and it's having to overcome my big chest in the wind sail and the ergos uh, and the lack of fairings, it doesn't want to slip through the air necessarily. So I will say it does feel like the bike is working a little harder than I would like for a highway motorcycle. Again, if you own an MTO3, you can absolutely ride this thing on the highway. You're not gonna have, you know, you're not gonna have to pull over on the right of the shoulder and have people passing you all the time. Uh, it will very comfortably sit between 65 to 75 miles an hour all day long. If your interstate commute uh, requires you to go 95 for some reason, uh, mine certainly doesn't, but if that is a requirement for you, not the right bike for it, right? Basically, any beginner bike's gonna struggle with that. Any, any 400 class bike is not gonna really enjoy doing 95 miles an hour all the time. Uh, this bike is no exception to that rule. So, I'd rate it like a six out of 10 in terms of its highway capabilities. It's definitely not the bike I would choose for that. But again, it's got enough power, it's got enough juice, uh, just barely, in my opinion, to be able to do the highway commute. Um, if your rides do include a lot of highway miles, you know, maybe a 300 class bike isn't the best choice necessarily, but hey, it's gonna return really solid fuel economy doing so. Um, I think this thing has a 3.7 gallon fuel tank, and uh, I've done about 66 miles and I'm not even seeing halfway indicated on this thing, which is pretty cool. So uh, it can definitely get some pretty good range, which is nice. Uh, so maybe you're not going the fastest, but you will get pretty far on the little MTO3, and you'll be very economical doing so. You could easily see upwards of 50 or 60 MPGs on this thing, easily. All that being said, folks, let's get this bike back to the shop. Let's render a final verdict, shall we? All right, guys, pulling back up to Yami Noob HQ here. We're rendering a final opinion on this sweet little Yamaha MT-03. So what do I make of it? Well, you know, this is a, I think a bit of a maligned motorcycle in the current market. People might think, oh, it's not fast enough, it's not cool enough. You got stuff like the CF Motos, the Ninja 400s, all that sort of thing. And it's the type of bike where I think it's really found its place in the market. You know, I think this bike is super cheap, super beginner friendly super easy to get along with and that really is its strength because it's so easy to ride because it's got such a low seat height this bike has carved itself a really nice niche as a short rider friendly motorcycle a uh, price conscious friendly motorcycle and hey it looks really cool you know it's got the mt bike styling with all that being said thank you so much for checking out today's video this is the last day to get entered to win this bike because spoiler alert we didn't talk about it on youtube because we're testing things so check the links out in the description below make sure you get your chances locked and loaded to win this yamaha mt03 thank you so much for checking out the video boys we'll catch you in the next one see you later Keep watching Yammy Noob.